every business has a logo. And when it's yours, it matters. GPS is a 30-year local Las Vegas company that produces custom merch, like hats and apparel, drinkware and totes, blankets and bandanas, really any kind of swag you can imagine that features your logo or message. They're experts at finding or creating the right products for the season and the reason that fit your budget and timeline. Check out the GPS website at gpslasvegas.com, where there's a world of products to promote your brand. Before we get started, uh, today is a big day. We are kicking off our fall member campaign. If you're new here, or even if you're a longtime listener, you might not know that CityCast Las Vegas is supported in part by memberships. It's true that our daily podcast and newsletter are completely free for anyone in our community, but that's only possible with member support. So all week, we're asking you to consider becoming a member to support our daily CityCast Las Vegas podcast and the Hey Las Vegas newsletter that you know and love. If we've ever helped you understand a local issue, hosted a guest you loved hearing from, or introduced you to the best of what's happening around town, even a good food wreck, now's the time to show your support. You know, CityCast loves talking about news stories, especially the ones that don't add up. Like when Brightline West High Speed Rail did their groundbreaking earlier this year, we had some questions. So we reached out to the company, also some state and federal officials to get more specifics. And yeah, we were right. The groundbreaking was probably a little premature. More importantly, we got a call from Brightline itself, who we'd been trying to reach, to let us know they respected our reporting and gave us a commitment to keep us in the loop, even as we asked the harder questions. Joining our membership community is indeed the best way to support this daily podcast. And here's something extra. Anyone who signs up during our fall campaign will receive an exclusive CityCast Las Vegas tote bag. I've seen them. They look great. It's the perfect way to show your support for local journalism while sporting some great swag around town. With your small monthly contribution, we'll get to stick around for years to come. Plus, you'll get access to our podcast ad-free. Just visit membership.citycast.fm to become a member today. That's membership.citycast.fm. The election for mayor of Las Vegas, it's arguably the most high-profile down-ballot race coming up next month. And we've been hearing a lot from the two candidates, Shelley Berkeley and Victoria Seaman. Now, not a debate, a forum, or a town hall goes by without someone asking at least one question about homelessness, but it's usually just the one question. Today on CityCast Las Vegas, we hyper-focus on this extremely important issue to our community with a series of questions for the mayoral candidates about their policies, specific challenges, and what they will prioritize as homelessness grows in our community along with the public demand for these answers. Originally, this was scheduled for both candidates to be in a room together with us, and unfortunately, scheduling prevented that. So each did a remote interview, we flipped a coin, and we're going to hear from Shelley Berkeley first. But make sure to tune in tomorrow for our interview with her opponent, Victoria Seaman, to see how her answers on homelessness compare. It's Monday, October 21st. I'm David Figler, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Shelly Berkeley, welcome back to CityCast Las Vegas. Uh, thank you, David. Thank you for having me. So both you and your opponent have essentially called our homelessness crisis a humanitarian issue in one sense or another. That's borne out by a terrifying statistic. This summer, 342 people in our county died from the heat. Whatever the city was doing this summer seems to have fallen short. So what can you as mayor do differently next summer to specifically keep that number down? Uh, well, this is a very serious problem, and unfortunately, it's a growing problem that if we don't get a handle on uh, that, that soon, it's going to be extremely difficult to um, address. So this is what my goal is. My goal is to get people off the streets and self-sustaining. Now, it 
we have, and I've said this on numerous occasions, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, the people that are working with the homeless, if it's the rescue mission, Catholic Charities, Vegas Stronger, the Courtyard, CARES, they all do yeoman's work. As far as I'm concerned, they're doing God's work. But it's not working because the problem is growing. So whatever wonderful work they're doing is obviously not enough to help solve the problem. Now, I'm not foolish enough to think that we can get everybody off the streets, but I do not believe the streets is a place for human beings to be. I don't want to criminalize homelessness. Heavens knows they have enough challenges without adding to it. However, if, uh, if we don't, I, I think it is insane to have people living on the streets. And as you start, as you said, when you started um, our discussion, uh, it is a humanitarian crisis. Human beings should not be living on the streets. I don't care if it's hot. I don't care if it's 118 degrees. They don't belong there. It's also a problem for businesses. And I'm talking about walk up and down Main Street or Commerce, uh, Commerce Street, Businesses, these are mom and pops. Many of them have their entire life savings tied up in this business and their customers can't get in because the homeless are, are living on the sidewalks. That's not acceptable to the businesses. And then finally, um, the larger businesses, I've heard nightmare scenarios from some of the hotel um, owners in downtown Las Vegas about their challenges of um, of dealing with the homeless. But Shelly, that, that 342 number of people who died this summer because of the heat is unprecedented. You've lived here forever. I have too. I've never heard a number that high. Specifically on this issue, the, the people dying of the heat exposure, do you have any specific plan to mitigate that number to bring it down? Well, look, the problem you have, David, you're asking for a simple select, uh, solution to a very, very complex issue. Another challenge that we have is when the more teams go out or Metro goes out and asks, uh, you know, tries to provide an alternative. We'd like to get you off the street. We could take you to the courtyard. The courtyard is not functioning the way it should. People would rather live on the streets than go get help in the courtyard. So how do you address people that won't leave the streets because there's not a viable option? So yes, I mean, the easy answer, although this is not the solution, we're talking geography right now, the easiest solution is to provide temporary shelter for people living on the streets, but there's no guarantee if you provide it that they will be willing to go because this is a much more complex uh, issue than just I'm living on the street and I need a place to live. You're dealing with people with serious mental health challenges. You're dealing with people that have serious addiction challenges and they're under um, they're underemployed because they don't have job training. So you we need as as a community, and that's more than just the city of Las Vegas, David. It's all the jurisdictions working together because homeless don't recognize jurisdictional boundaries. Uh, you don't know if you're in the city of Las Vegas or the county, you're out on the streets. So as the mayor, your jurisdiction would be the 83 square miles that make up the city of Las Vegas. Where a majority of the homeless are are currently existing. Right. And you mentioned the more teams, which are basically uh, a mixture of law enforcement and social workers who are dispatched out to uh, the community. There are only five more teams right now uh, in the city of Las Vegas. That's to cover the entire city. The more team doesn't work overnight and they don't have the capacity to immediately respond to calls, but focus, to my understanding, on encampments that are lingering. Both you and your opponent have touted that the more team is a fundamental too. More team brings water, strongly suggests dismantling of encampments to tell people to move on, and as you indicated, trying to convince people to go to the courtyard or seek services. How 
Shelly, do you specifically make the more team, well, more? More. Well, it does need to be more. Um, I, I'm dissatisfied with the, the way this is working. So what do you do? As you know, the legislature appropriated $100 million in the last session with the understanding that the resort corridor was going to be um, a matching that. So you have $200 million. They, this uh, resort corridor is taking um, the lead on this. The Wynn Hotel is taking the lead of the resort corridor. Their plan is to acquire land, and I understand they are zeroing in on land, not in downtown Las Vegas, but still within the city limits, building a campus that can accommodate a 1,000 people at a time where they're providing intense uh, mental health uh, um, therapy. It doesn't do anybody any good. You're going to give them that, that, you know, script that they can go and see a mental health provider once a month. That's not what is going to help these people. In addition to that, they it will have mental health uh, therapy, uh, addiction therapy, job training, and because the resort corridor is uh, heading this up, they have a job when it's over. Then, when they are able to care for themselves, provide housing, and then monitor these people. You can't let them go. You know, just, all right, you've got your training, you're clean now, goodbye. No, they have to be monitored. This is a full-service thing. I also have a friend that just signed a lease on the land across the street from the VA hospital that I, that's, as you know, it's my proudest accomplishment in Congress building that VA hospital, but a 800 bed facility for homeless veterans that by and large um, provides the same type of PTSD therapy, which of course is a major problem with veterans, Uh, addiction therapy, job training. Uh, The building trades are Desperate, desperate for good quality workers. The gaming industry or the resort industry, desperate for good service job people. And we can do this thing if we all work together and, and get it solved. But it's not a Band-Aid. And I think the question you're asking me, I mean, the obvious answer is provide uh, facilities where when it's very, very hot, that people can go into a temporary shelter. That's not the solution to our homeless problem. That's well, getting people off the street so that they don't die from the heat. And I'll tell you something else, and I know you're anxious to uh, say something, but I one of my big A-frame signs on West Sahara, West Sahara Tanea, pretty good neighborhood. I drive by, I see this activity under my sign um, it became very obvious somebody's living under the side. It's 118 degrees. Now, tell yeah. me where that is uh, humane to leave somebody living under that sign. We have to do better than that, and we must, and we will. Now, two pigeons bemoaning the fact you can stream DirecTV satellite-free. These humans can stream all the top-rated national news channels on DirecTV, and now with no satellite dish. This just in. Weather, sports, election coverage. DirecTV has it all, but something is missing. The satellite dish. What are you doing? I'm reporting the news. Back to you, Bob. Here's some news. You're a buffoon. Stream the top-rated national news channels. No satellite dish. Visit directtv.com. Internet required. Top rated news based on 2023 Nielsen ratings. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Shelly, in 2023, the Nevada legislature passed a number of bills which would have lowered barriers to getting new housing, like limits on these application fee schemes, 
Uh, They would have kept rents reasonable for seniors by capping the percentage of increases in rent, not a rent cap, but a percentage cap for seniors only, and reforming Nevada's only in the nation approach to summary evictions, which essentially uh, would have given tenants more rights and time. Governor Lombardo vetoed all those bills, and it's undeniable that many people experiencing homelessness for the first time would not have lost the ability to be housed if those laws had been passed. First, do you agree with Governor Lombardo's vetoes of these specific access to housing bills? Um, I I want to say this, and I'm not being evasive. I need to do a deeper dive and see about this legislation. The legislature will have an opportunity. The, as you know, I served in the legislature uh, many years ago. Those are the first pieces of legislation the legislature will take up. They have an opportunity to override the governor's veto. Whose responsibility is it to, with the summary evictions? I mean, we want developers uh, to keep building. We want more apartments. We want more affordable housing. Do we want to make it the landlord's responsibility that they could never get somebody out of their home? What if they're dealing drugs out of their apartment? What if they're, uh, what if they are uh, tenants that should be evicted? Do we want to make sure that, do we want to keep them in their homes, uh, their apartments? I don't think so. And I don't think that's what anybody wants to do. So I think there are. Well, I mean, other others, every single other state doesn't have summary eviction. And certainly there still would be ways to put people out. uh, But it just makes it so convenient for the landlords and the tenants are the ones who are suffering. These are the people who are landing on the streets. Not necessarily, not, uh, uh, look, there's a lot of reasons that you're on the streets, and I don't want to make it sound, and I think a bit of what we've talked about makes it sound that everybody on the streets is the same. No, we have people on the streets that they're working, and they just can't afford the rent. Shelly, we heard a lot of testimony at that legislature from people who say that they are just spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars that they don't have for applications just to get into an apartment and that the landlords aren't even seriously considering their applications. They're taking multiple applications from different people. So that's that's the bill. That's one of the bills that Governor Lombardo vetoed. What will you do as mayor to reduce barriers for people in the city to get into housing and stay housed once they're in places? Look, if they are good tenants, they're not going to want to, the landlord isn't going to want to throw them out. I think there are lots of ways of addressing this that they're not thrown out on the streets. What uh, what could they be? Uh, 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 Providing or or making these people that are applying for apartments pay an excessive fee uh, is outrageous to me. Um, uh, uh, Jacking up the cost of rent beyond what is palpable and and affordable is unacceptable to me. So if they're, again, if the legislature overrides the vetoes, and then my job as mayor of Las Vegas is to ensure that the uh, state law is implemented in the city. Uh, but until that happens, there isn't very much that the city council can do. But I like the, look, we have a serious supply and demand issue. And these, uh, we need to make sure that we have enough supply to meet the demand. So what does that mean? Uh, the city recently passed an ordinance that was promoted by um, uh, uh, Brian Knutson. It increased the density uh, requirements. It uh, lowered the parking uh, uh, regulations so that there are, you don't need that much uh, that many parking spots. Now that's great for downtown Las Vegas. If you're living in downtown Las Vegas and they're increasing the density and uh, lowering the number of um, parking spaces, that's a good thing. Um, uh, now, in addition to that, they streamlined the permitting process for uh, developers that are building um, affordable housing. I think that's a very good start. We spoke with a person, a longtime Las Vegan, someone who was uh, basically born and raised here, who experienced homelessness this year. Uh, they found their way into some transitional housing 
But she says she hears a lot of talk about these great plans for the people who are in urgent stages of homelessness, the addicted, the mentally ill, the chronically in distress. But she has heard very little from the candidates about addressing the root causes of homelessness, lower wages, housing policy, medical costs, especially for people like her who are from Las Vegas and had a sudden change of circumstance. Mm -hmm. What specific policies will you have for longtime locals to prevent that first push into homelessness? Well, I don't think it's only longtime locals that are dealing with that problem. You could only be, you could be here for a year or two, have a perfectly good job, and then find yourself um, unable to work, uh, unemployed, and in desperate need of housing. These are issues that the, ca- the city uh, already addresses in some manner. She needs to be what we need to do is do a better job in advising our fellow citizens of where they can go for help. And there are certain agencies and, and social agencies that do, in fact, deal with issues of of, of immediate need that aren't involved, that don't have opioid problems, that don't have um, mental health issues. They've just fallen on bad times. And one of the things, and why, why I supported the Affordable Care Act when I was in Congress, is that so many people that all of a sudden found themselves in dire circumstances having to declare a bankruptcy because they've spent all of their life savings because they had a medical uh, problem. And and everything they'd saved for, everything they'd done for decades disappeared during their medical episodes. And so uh, there are there are various programs that are available now to people that are ha- facing those challenges, but they're unaware that these programs exist. And I think we need to do a much better job of letting people know where they could go if they fall into that dire circumstance. And it doesn't have to, it could be a very temporary circumstance, but you need help. Are there any programs that the city should be sponsoring under your leadership? I'm not sure they're not already. Okay. I think there are programs that are available. And again, I am not the mayor yet, David. (laughs) But once I go, once if I'm lucky enough to be elected, number one, deal with the Badlands, because that's going to have an economic impact that's going to be with us for quite a while. And we don't know what we will have to spend in order to provide basic city services until we know what the outcome of that of our negotiations with the developer will be. That's number one. Number two, homelessness. We know the problem is getting worse, and we know that we need to have immediate action to fix it. We talked about the courtyard a little bit. The city has invested a lot of money and resources. You have pointed out that you don't think that the courtyard is operating efficiently or properly. We've talked to people who say that uh, there is a reluctance for a lot of people to go to this facility because the services and providers are inconsistent. How do you ensure that with the courtyard still functioning, that the services that are offered are consistent and productive. How do you do it differently than what's being done now? The city needs to have oversight over the courtyard and all of the different programs that are currently serving the homeless. If they're not providing the services that we are touting, and let me give you a perfect example. There's a statistic uh, that um, the, the the city uh, was able to get 800 and some odd people off the streets. We find out that um, a large percentage of that 800 and something people that the city is touting that it got off the streets are bus tickets to go someplace else. Those right. are transportation issues. That's not providing housing for people. So let us first get a handle on the problem and let's start documenting this and putting it in the right category. Look, if somebody has family in a different jurisdiction in a different state and they can get help from their family, but for lack of uh, money to buy a bus ticket, they're stuck in Las Vegas, by all means provide it. 
but don't say you've provided housing for that person when all you've managed to do is is give them a bus ticket. Don't misunderstand me. I think that's important and it would be necessary for that person. But how do we do we even have accurate statistics knowing who needs what? How many people on the streets can we get off, put them into transitional housing? How many people need mental health uh, therapy and facilities? When a friend of mine runs the rescue mission. About a year ago, Heather and I sat down and I spent some time at the rescue mission. And again, what she's doing is God's work. And I, I said to her, if I could wave a magic wand, what do you need? Without missing a beat, David, she said the city needs a mental health facility because most of the people we're dealing with have mental health issues. If we recognize that and we can address it, then we need to do that. In the, in the city of Las Vegas, there is what has been celebrated as a successful conversion of an old abandoned motel into supportive traditional housing. It's over on Fremont Street. It's funded by Clark County in partnership with U.S. Vets, Help of Southern Nevada, and others, but not the city of Las Vegas. In fact, some efforts by the county to put more housing in the city into these abandoned motels, et cetera, have been rebuked. Would you be open to working with the county to convert more abandoned motels around the city or to do it on your own following this model? I would. I am open to uh, speaking with the county. And, you know, I'm friends with all of the county commissioners to see what we could do collaborating to to provide transitional housing. But again, you're not getting at the problem most of the time. If it's successful, then you expand the program. If it's not successful, then you go in a different direction. But of course I'm open to it. I'm open to anything that's going to help get people off the streets. And I'll tell you this, I'm, uh, I work very closely with um, uh, Deacon Tom at Catholic Charities and uh, the last uh, last Thanksgiving, my family go down in mass on Thanksgiving every Thanksgiving, and we feed the homeless. Now, for the first time, I noticed, and all of my family noticed as well, there were far more families uh-huh. that were living on the streets and and at that Thanksgiving dinner. Now, that is a serious problem. Not only should we not have adults living on the streets because it is inhuman. It is even worse when there are children involved. Shelley, this question comes from a former high-level government staffer who worked in the area of homelessness. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Southern Nevada Homeless Continuum of Care is the crucial uh, aspect of securing vital federal funding, and its success depends on effective regional collaboration. The yes. city has the city of Las Vegas has been criticized for not being effective in this space, as well as not sending people with authority to act to be the city's representatives. What specific strategies will you implement to ensure that Las Vegas representation at the continuum of care uh, is specifically more effective and better at communication, even with your own city council? I, <laughs> one of the uh, things I think that I, one of the values I bring to the office is the fact uh, that, A, I've been around for a while and I know everybody. There isn't a person in the state that I can't call and will get a call back from. Um, I uh, I think it's extremely important that all the jurisdictions work together. And if I have to be at the meeting myself in order to um, make this happen, I have no problem being there. I think it, homelessness is that much of an issue that the mayor needs to be directly involved. Las Vegas isn't alone in its rising population of people who are on the streets and unhoused. That is correct. What, what have you found is working in other cities that Las Vegas has not tried yet? I think, uh, I don't know what they're doing in other cities. I just know what we're doing here. 
So to ask me a question when I've been down, uh, you know, here in Las Vegas campaigning for the last two years, I think is is uh, a question that I can't answer for you. I have not gone to different cities and checked it out. I'm not the mayor of Las Vegas yet, but I'm looking forward to being the mayor of Las Vegas, recognizing that this is a major problem and working to solve it. And if I feel that there are other model cities that are handling this uh, challenge better than we are, then I would be delighted to go and see for myself. But right now, I need to do a deep dive into what's happening on our streets in the city of Las Vegas and in all of Southern Nevada, see how we could work cooperatively with the other jurisdictions and uh, start solving this problem. If we don't, it's going to get worse. Shelly, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department has indicated that with regard to the so-called public camping ban recently passed by the city, um, that they aren't interested in enforcing it because it distracts from finding long-lasting holistic approaches meeting the specific needs of individuals they encounter. If it's not popular with even the police, and it (laughs) arguably doesn't fix the underlying issues, why even have this law on the books? Well, I'm not sure about that. And uh, as I said earlier, criminalizing homelessness is definitely not the solution. I I think there should be a camping ban. But before you uh, force people off the streets, you better have an alternative for them. And that's where improving the situation at the courtyard is so very essential. And that's been a bit... I don't think that unless there is an altercation or a serious problem, we are taking police resources that certainly could be used in other areas in the community and forcing them to be social workers dealing with the homeless. That's not a good use of our resources. So I think what we need to do or what I would recommend, again, is a far more holistic approach figure out what we're going to do, but a camping ban, I don't want to see anybody on the streets. I genuinely don't for their own sake, I don't. But unless you provide an alternative for these people, when you remove them, all you're doing is destroying the little ecosystem that they've been able to create for themselves. And that's not good either. I mean, I've heard instances where um, uh, they, somebody is living under the bridge and uh, law enforcement or the mortar, whatever, comes in and takes their possessions. You really want to take the only possessions that these desperate people have? I don't want to do that. I want to be solution-oriented and provide a holistic approach so that we can get as many people off the streets, self-sustaining, get them clean, get them trained, and get them into suitable housing that they can take care of themselves and and the, the housing that uh, they have been provided. It's not, uh, this isn't brain surgery. It is there and it's right in front of our faces. And if we don't recognize that there is a problem and that we must solve it, then the problem is just going to continue to grow. And that's bad for the community and it's bad for the people living on the streets. Well, Shelly Berkeley, candidate for Las Vegas mayor, thank you so much for coming and answering our questions about homelessness on CityCast Las Vegas. Well, I appreciate it, David. This is such an important issue. But again, if people are looking for an easy solution or a pat on the back with kudos, I, I, I don't have it to give. I think we've got a long way to go. The problem is get is exacerbating and we need to figure out what we're going to do. And there are, again, working with the resort corridor, that's a wonderful beginning. Working with the uh, this veterans uh, homeless um, housing, very important. Uh, 20% of the homeless are, are veterans. Um, that's unacceptable to me as an American citizen to have our... Uh, fighting men and women um, that, that come home and find themselves on the streets. This is not what they went to fight for, and they deserve better than that. So we've got a lot to do, and it's uh, and we're going to do it. We have to do it. Shelly Berkeley, thanks again. Thank you.
And a quick reminder that our fall campaign is underway. Become a CityCast Las Vegas member, and not only will you get all the good feels and the great perks, but if you join during the campaign, you'll also get that exclusive CityCast Las Vegas tote bag. Just head to membership.citycast.fm right now to join. If you're already a member, we really do thank you. We couldn't do this without you. That's all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. If you enjoyed the show, go tell a friend. You can also rate our show with the little stars, leave us a review, and subscribe to our morning newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with candidate Victoria Seaman talking about homelessness. Till then, stay lucky. Stay lucky.